meeting to order. Miami Township Board of Trustees. And our meeting was on March 18th. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adopt minutes of the March 4th, 4th meeting. So moved. I second. Any comments? Discussion? I don't think so. Um, you call the roll, please. Mr. Stockwell pointed out one apparent typo that I would correct. Um, Ms. Winter. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Motion to approve. I uh, would entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills in the total of $56,826.32. From the general fund, ten thousand six hundred seventy-three dollars and fourteen cents. From the fire fund, thirty-four thousand nine hundred eight dollars and thirty-five cents. From EMS, four thousand eight hundred seventy-four dollars. From cemetery, two hundred forty-nine dollars. And from roads, six thousand one hundred twenty-one dollars and eighty-three cents. Do I hear a motion? Move that we pay the bills. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we pay the bills as presented. We have the roll. Ms. Meyer? Yes. Ms. Moocher? Yes. Ms. Allison? Yes. Motion to approve. Is there anything from correspondence that's worth, that merits being on the agenda? I just pulled the two items that are part of the resolutions, that's all I saw. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'll zip through them because they're all okay. a merit. Uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture Compliance Review, uh, Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission Notification of Transportation Grant, uh, David Graham, County Auditor, Official estimate of resources. Green County engineer invites, uh, this is out of date, but anyway, to Green County Townships, Township Association meeting. Uh, Denise Swinger sent a draft zoning inspector job description. And I'd like to add that to, mm -hmm. you know, call it old business, new business. Uh, Claudia. Or Jane uh, Brawler, uh, email of interest in serving on the Zoning Commission, and Mark Willis, email of interest in serving on the Zoning Commission, and Stephanie Goff, our county engineer, uh, sent notice of. Township zoning responsibility training tomorrow morning or Wednesday morning. Probably the 20th. That's regarding the stormwater? Yeah, and I plan to go to that. Okay. 7.30 in the morning. Uh, so we will be talking later in the agenda about zoning commission uh, appointments. Zoning inspector job description. I don't think anything else. I had put those under the public part of the agenda, the zoning commission applicants, but um, okay. it doesn't that makes matter. Sense. It, would, it, it would excuse the people they need to go, but it, I don't care which way. Which way we can Well, we can do that now. You pay the bills? Okay, good. Uh, Margaret, how about if you introduce folks and... It's Marilyn. Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to introduce Jane, Jane, Bra Jane Brailler, who wrote a, a, a said nice letter, interested in the Zoning Commission. Um, would you like to say a few words about why you'd like to serve and your background and things? Sure. Um, how many people have actually read the letter? I, we all have, so. 
but nobody here, so um, I don't know how much to reiterate. Um, well, the viewing audience. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what I wasn't certain about. I'm not really certain. So, um, just retired as a professor at the University of Dayton, and so that sort of has had with it one skill set that is my more recent past. I was there for 23, 24 years and was an associate dean. And so as far as um, grant writing, um, <clears throat> reading proposals and conducting uh, risk benefit analyses, uh, just consuming fairly large volumes of information and putting them to a co coherent form and um, you know the written format is probably my strongest suit you know um, close to 100 uh, peer-reviewed publications um, with a very large readership worldwide still and um, then if you go back a little ways over the last 24 years I've lived in the township I have three different properties uh, in the township, all rural. Um, I've dealt with a lot of different um, zoning type uh, ideas and had in-depth uh, conversations with Richard Zopp uh, on all of the different ideas that I've had. Um, have looked into a lot of um, interest as far as going with solar and have kind of watched it go from not appearing terribly cost effective and then over these last 24 years it has become become more cost effective and so I've kind of worked through that process and so that's where my um, toehold in the agricultural component is because I own three rural properties in our township and I've been very involved with looking into solar and also um, lots of different zoning um, you know, opportunities as far as events and things like that have also had a lot of neighbors who hold all these pop-ups or do different things with their properties and have been to the meetings where we're looking at how the um, appropriate zoning rules apply to the different types of events that they have held. Um, and then if you go back a little bit, uh, I'm an agricultural extension agent from Montana and um, that's my undergraduate degree is as an agricultural extension agent and also was a full-time farrier in Montana and then in Washington State for... I'm sorry, full-time? Horseshoer. <laughs> yeah, farrier. Farrier, that okay. Word at all is a, yeah, it's horseshoer though. <laughs> um, first woman to become journeyman certified farrier in the world. Oh. So oh. it was, um, yeah, kind of cool. Um, just happened to be kind of on the forefront of women going into that um, profession. Um, and so, up until I decided to go back and get the graduate degrees, I was 100% agriculture. My entire upbringing and past is all agricultural oriented. Um, just other things like when people were kind of having issues with some of the things some of our local farmers were doing, I would attend those meetings, and I can say like pit sticks to begin with. I also border Fulton's properties. But I would go out and just firsthand go and see what was going on in these different operations and could pretty much vouch that animals were very well tended. And if you've ever had any exposure to large animal agriculture, um, a lot of things may not look okay, but people, you know, I'm vegan, but people who eat meat might have to adjust their thinking a little bit on what individuals have to do that are raising livestock. Um, so I've had a lot of involvement with all of my neighbors, you know, all around me. So everybody rural in the township, especially on my end, I'm very familiar with them. Um, what road do you live, or your actual house, where do you live? 68 Yellow Springs Fairfield Road. Mm -hmm. And then I've also got the property next door to that. And then I own the, um, the glass farm homestead and barn. Mm -hmm. um, so the village owns the rest of it, but I've got the, the home mm -hmm. and the barn, the, the old dairy barn that still has the milking stanchions and everything in it. Um, mm -hmm. 
So, I don't know, raise register for any cattle. I just, I don't know, is that enough? I mean, it's just, yeah. like, when you're 70 years old, there's a lot of, you try to go back through everything you can take. Yeah. I'm sorry, put you on the spot, I just thought. Yeah, I'm just kind of, you know, it's kind of two worlds, but I think that the, the agricultural thing has always been omnipresent for me, but then, you know, kind of switching gears at a point in life and going back for the doctoral training and being a professor and associate dean at the University of Dayton brings a separate skill set in that can yeah. sort of contextualize some of the agricultural experience and issues that, that come forth. Yeah. Have you had a chance to audit any of the zoning commission meetings? No. No, no I've been to, no. Do you understand the position that's open this evening? It's an alternate an position? An alternate position, mm -hmm. which gives an individual, as I understand it, um, no vote, but a bit of time to become more familiar with what the members of the committee would be doing, so it's not like hitting the ground. And you can, you can participate in all the discussions and yes. uh, everything except for the vote. vote. Unless, unless someone's at the committee. Someone. Yeah, right, that's, it. that's what I understood. I okay. did read about it, and... Um, the, the one thing I wouldn't know right off is if an alternate would have any responsibilities or could have or could take responsibility for um, any writing that needs to be done mm -hmm. or if there are grant applications that need to be filed. That would, be between, that would be between you and the chair of the, of the zoning commission. Yeah, fine. Just, just to reiterate, the zoning commission is an entirely separate body from trustees. They're appointed, right. but they, they operate under their own bylaws and, and make their own, uh, obviously, rules and regulations. Yes. So for all intents and purposes, uh, our position is to, is to uh, just fill seats. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Brian, Brian specifically came to us this year and asked for assistance with writing, so I, I imagine, I won't speak for him, but I imagine he'd be happy to have somebody who likes to write mm -hmm. on the... Mark Willis, okay. I want you to not be intimidated. I just can't believe we found this person of Jane in our small pool of um, people that we have to choose from. We only have, I don't know how many adults we have to choose from to fill these boards. There's only how many people in the township itself yeah. that incorporated? Um, 1,300 or 1,000? Over a 1,000. Over a 1,000? Yeah, more than a 1,000. Between 13 and 16, depending upon... Minus the children, so yeah. Coming. So, and... But we have two seats to fill. Right, I was going to say, we can have... Oh yes, I just, if I was following Jane and the, 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 the resume you just, um, the, how you happen to have all those things that came, I just wanted to. Yeah, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I think so too. Know that. This is, this are you a fairy? I have a shoot of horse, but I've been oh, thrown one once or twice. Are you, <laughs> are you a fairy? I mean, not, but I, I, I admire them. Yeah. <laughs> In the first female period, congratulations. Yeah, the main thing is, is there's, of the diversity because I'm sure you've got different experiences than I have. Yeah. You've shoot horses, I've ridden them. So yeah. Uh -huh. The other end. I've been on both sides of them. But anyway, but I'll be yeah, so I'm interested in hearing about you. Okay. Well my name's Mark Willis. I'm fairly new to actually living in the township. But I grew up in Fairborn, went to Wright State, Old Park Hill. So this has been my backyard. I used to go to Young's when they made donuts 24 hours a day. So, um, so I've spent a lot of time in this area and feel very familiar with it. Um, and I now live on 131 East State Yellow Springs, so it's in the township. Um, currently, I'm director of the Hall Hunger Initiative. That's the anti-hunger group Tony Hall created. And we work with a lot of agriculture and work to support local growers to remove barriers so they can be successful. Um, and I'm not an expert on, on farming, but I, I do have some connection with it. Uh, I spent 26 years at the library doing community relations, so one of the things I've always felt comfortable with in, in these sort of settings is to make sure the community gets heard, their input is listened to, um, and you have a good conversation. 
uh, that the board represents what the community wants, not just the, the loudest voice out there, which sometimes happens. I've worked several years in law firms as paralegal, so I've read, wrote and read a lot of this kind of technical stuff, so that's not intimidating at all. I've also written countless grants and um, one book, so I have done a fair amount of writing, including some technical writing, so I, I'm also very comfortable with that. My degree is in communication, uh, a BA and BS as I call it, but, <laughs> but it has taught me, and, and I've done journalism and, and newspaper writing, so I've done a, a lot of writing also, but not quite as much as James, so very comfortable. I, I did attend the last Township um, Zoning Commission meeting, and very interested in the discussion. I mean, the solar is important, but I think the whole, that's only, a, a, to me, a small part of the whole bigger thing, the idea of the land use plan and balancing, uh, keeping the, the, what we have here and still meeting the demands of the, the community. And that's, that's what interests me, is how you balance those two things. Did you have any additional questions about the role of the alternate that we were just No, no, about? Marilyn had explained that to me pretty okay. well, so I had a pretty good idea. And, and listening to the last meeting was really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, good discussion. Well, thank you. And, and I thought they did a good job, by the way, listening to the people up with that. Good. Good. All right, Chair. Do we want to take action? Make any other questions? No. <laughs> Uh, I mean, <laughs> if not, I make a motion to uh, appoint both the individuals to uh, all the positions on the zoning commission. I'm enthusiastically second that. I don't know whether they're they're termed or not. Now that I think about it, I saw in the RC that they are. I thought they were one year term. Is that right? Mm -hmm. As an alternate, mm -hmm. they were one year terms, but I don't remember if that corresponds with the rules of the zoning commission. But mm -hmm. the appointment occurs here, right. so I don't know if your rules apply as to how long they are mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And I certainly wouldn't want to be quoted as actually knowing your rules either. Well, most of what we do is it is driven by the ORC anyway, so. Um, if it says one year, we could say 50, but it's not going to make any difference. But I think reappointment is not excluded in that. That is to say, okay, you serve a year, you could serve the second year, you could serve it, you could, might come back to you each year to say, oh, oh well, definitely. I mean, we, we reappoint for, uh, until someone has moved or passed away. <laughs> or declined. Or declined, yeah. <laughs> but that never happens. Yeah, okay. How about we make this appointment uh, through this calendar year and at our first meeting yeah. in January as we make all sorts of appointments we'll just no, I agree. do the alternate and then we will do one of the other one of the voting members uh, so it's been moved and seconded that we uh, appoint as alternates to the zoning commission to folks who have introduced themselves. Um, can we call the roll? Mr. Richard? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. The motion is approved. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. You're welcome to stay. Wait, you're that's you're that's, that's, that's you. mine. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're welcome to stay as a member of the public. And we'll notify Chair Corey of the action. But you're not obligated to stay. May I ask what's on the agenda? Uh, uh, we will we'll have a fire department report. We'll have a cemetery and road report. We will have a uh, fiscal officer's report, which includes permanent appropriations for 2024. We finished the first quarter. And and uh, do the ongoing appropriations. Uh, and we will have standing committee reports. And then uh, our, one of our insurance companies had scheduled a visit and the 
discussion of meeting room scheduling, uh, discussion of zoning inspector job description, and depending on how much time is left, uh, discussion of what we want to advertise ongoing in the Yellow Springs News. Just vote. Yes. Yeah. And a discussion about what a resolution versus, versus a motion is. Okay. I've been trying to get this on for oh. many meetings. Well, Chris and I have debated. <laughs> now he has the, the answer. Uh, let's move on then to fire department report. Okay, um, so since last meeting we had 20 EMS calls. Uh, not really sure why that was down for this particular uh, period. Uh, eight fire calls and we actually had no mutual aid request or receive uh, calls during that period of time. Um, Brush 81 will continue to be out of service for a, an unknown period of time. Um, there were two options for repairing. One was to actually replace the entire SCED unit in the back. That's basically about 16 grand. So uh, the other option was to replace the engine and the pump assembly. That's eight grand. So kind of a no brainer on that. Um, so I'm waiting for the, the formal quote on that. Hopefully we'll have that in a couple of more days. And um, yeah, it, it is what it is, unfortunately. Uh, engine 82 repairs are going pretty decently. Most of that's been valve rebuilds and some of that. It does need to go down to uh, the shop in Springboro for additional pit repairs. The um, uh, pump transmission has a uh, leaking seal in it, so they, need, they have to be able to tear that down at the shop, as well as the rear brakes need to be uh, replaced. Um, at this point, just, just pads, though. Um, let's see. Uh, as far as Eclipse planning goes, um, I'm going to increase the staffing that day from three to, to eight, if I can get eight people for sure. Um, and then that extra staff will be on um, basically the morning 12-hour shift. Uh, I'd like to bring him in later, but just not knowing how traffic's going to be coming into town, and how that's going to be impacted, it's just probably safer to just bite the bullet on that. Um, and uh, and really the same, we, I mean, I would think, fingers crossed, by 1900, we might start to see some auto traffic returning to a little bit of norm normalcy. Um, I will be in the county EOC for that. I thought this was a great drill opportunity for me to be in, in the EOC. Um, so that will put Nate in charge here Does, locally. What is EOC? Emergency Operations Center. So that's in, that's in the count or the county EOC and space mm -hmm. in the courthouse. Um, Paige and I met with Friends Care Center um, just to go over some of their plans that they had. Um, I explained to, to Friends Care that um, more likely not what we would be doing is limiting our transports to GMH so that. It, I would expect that to be easier to drive uh, and get an ambulance to the hospital as opposed to going to sewing. Um, some exceptions with that would be if like, we're having an active MI or something like that where we want to get the patient to the cat lab right away. Mm -hmm. um, and then the game plan uh, would actually be to go out Hyde Road, um, and go all the way down Hyde Road because there's really nowhere anybody can park. So mm -hmm. my thought process is that that would not be you know, a, a crazy street to get down compared to yeah. Dayton Hill Springs Road yeah, to an extent. Did. But I mean, there's just a, a number of different things that are just gonna have to be, you know, just planned like, okay, this is how it's going. Mm -hmm. uh, and and hope they're the best. Could we have uh, one of the plow, township plow trucks lined up to <laughs> go in front of the ambulance? Yes, I like that. <laughs> so, we used to actually le legitimately do that back when we got real snow. More than a few times that the plow took us to green. Uh, the ASO inventory module will go in service April 1. 
Um, you remind me what ESO stands for. Uh, just the ESO. <laughs> it doesn't actually stand for anything. Um, but the um, so the last phase that we have to do with the with the inventory module is mapping some of the equipment and supplies that we use, uh, primarily going to patient care reports and. And so we'll have that done here in another, uh, probably, I would say, maybe Thursday. Um, and then the rest of that will be training time and us playing around with it and, and getting used to it before it's rolled out to the troops. Uh, insurance Services Organization, uh, which has now been renamed to Vera Risk, will be here on Friday to do our site survey. I did email him and tell him that um, this Engine 82 is potentially going to be out for the week, and that may need to require us to reschedule it. In the past, they inventory the trucks and do all that kind of stuff. We can't inventory a truck who's not here. So that, that ball's in his court on that. Um, we did have an officer staff meeting last week. was uh, pretty well attended. I only had one person that was missing. Um, and also last week, we had Stryker come out to demo the cot for the workers' compensation grant. It is absolutely amazing. Um, it weighs 85 pounds less than the current cot we have. It's, I, I don't know how they did it. I remember lifting heavy cots that weren't even motorized like ours is that weighed less than what this, cot, or more than what this cot has. So I don't know what magic juju they're putting in their metal, but it's pretty impressive. Um, we'll have how rescue here. Because the battery's not included. Yes, exactly, <laughs> there, there you go, that's a good point. Um, we'll have Powell Rescue here on Thursday to demo the new Drager Air Packs, which would be what I want to stick to, um, but I haven't seen the, the newest Spangled one, so, um, and the whole department knows about that, so they have the option of coming in and seeing that as well. Uh, that is all I have on my report. Oh, so, <coughs> oh no, no, I'm sorry, wait a minute, now I missed something. Thank you. Um, I skipped a line. Um, I know there was some question about the meeting room cameras, and I did verify that those don't record the audio. It's just strictly the video. Yeah. And Don was asking about ESO. It's, it's, the way I think of it, it's just a, a big system that tracks all systems in a, in a yeah. modern fire department, like yeah. fleet maintenance and then staff. So it's called the Fire Department Record Management System, and just exactly what Marilyn said, every aspect of every data that the Fire Department ever touches is in. And so it's a package suite of applications that are all web-based. That includes like our patient care reports, inspection, personnel records, um, all the inventory stuff. I mean, it just... And for some reason, it's called the SO. Yeah. <laughs> and we haven't finished implementing it. Yeah. The, the, so what the last thing that we have to do is, so let's say that, you know, we take Jane Doe to the hospital and we do all of these procedures, uh, treatments, IVs. whatever, right? So it'll know, okay, well, if you start an IV on this person, use an example, what kind of fluid did you use? What kind of IV drift set? What kind of angiocath? And you put that in, and that pulls from inventory, tracks all that inventory and everything. So, so if that's you had that oxygen, aspect. it could be a mask, or it could be nasal cannula. Yep. So one of those two things is a different expense than the other. Yep. Exactly. Yep. And you had mentioned, I'd ask you about um, <clears throat> tying in with engine 82 is our, our oldest engine? No, that's the newest. And um, <clears throat> I had asked you about tracking the repairs for mm -hmm. for each one and that eventually ESO will do that so <clears throat> when we make cost benefit analysis of when we replace things we'll yeah. know if we, we're investing in a new piece of equipment we know how much we're going to be saving in so I, I talked to <clears throat> or I'm sorry I didn't talk to I remember recalling a conversation um, when Dave even retired somewhere in the fire station I haven't found yet is actually a list of all of that um, and in fact, what I'll do and go back and put that in ESO, so we can generate some some reports. So yeah. it's somewhere in a box, somewhere just, in this building. Yeah, just, just eventually it. we'll yeah. it will look at one machine and say, okay, how much have we put into it in the last five mm -hmm. years? Sure. Yeah. Dave Eamon, that's decades ago. <laughs> no. It feels like it. What, three years, Tom? Yeah. How many? Three, three years. 
It feels like it feels like, no, it, it, it feels like it's been a long time. Trust me, I, I miss Dave a lot, a lot. He was in his garage. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I'd like to know if it's going to be cloudy on April 8th. <laughs> I think a lot of us would hope it's cloudy on April 8th. <laughs> oh. <laughs> us, us in public safety and emergency management, we, we would be okay with that. There'll still be a lot of people. Have already, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're totally right. It's going to be a lot of people. already have reserves at a little yes. DMV or something or whatever to come down and or come to the area, maybe not to this area, but just a little far north, or a little bit more north and west. They still got to get out of there. Right. Well, and I, we've got two events that are uh, planned for the village. We we kind of came to the decision that it would be better for us to actually, excuse me, plan an event or two and say, we've got somewhere that you can be focused so that we have a better idea of where people are and, and that kind of a thing. And uh, you know, that's hopefully that game plan works. And that's that's been as a result of Paige, Johnny, and I and regular communication amongst us. So that's been actually it's been terrific. Yeah, I saw that map with all the mm -hmm. restrooms and yep. event areas. And I don't know how they managed to get a hoard, uh, 100 uh, ported guns. Oh, they do? Yeah. 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 Yeah, we think actually they have them, or they already have them. They they have them. They're officially I reserved. Think that many for street fair, do you? Uh, I I not sure how many for street fair. Okay. Um, it's a it's a lot, but I don't know that it's that many. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Well, we have two resolutions that different issues the county wants us to address that kind of really mesh with <clears throat> fire and rescue. Uh, it's a resolution to uh, support the counties to approve the final plan for Green County wide 911 system. The update, yeah. It's updated. Also known as uh, Next Gen 911. Okay. Uh, and I will read the bulk of the uh, resolution. Whereas 128.06 Section D of the Ohio Revised Code requires that each county 911 program review committee maintain and amend a final plan for implementing and operating a countywide 911 system. And whereas the Green County 911 program review committee has created the final plan pursuant to the requirements of Ohio Revised Code. And whereas Ohio Revised Code Section 128.07B1A requires that the committee send a copy of the final plan to the Board of Township Trustees of each county by certified mail, our ordinary mail, or ordinary mail, and by internet identifier of record. And whereas ORC requires that the legislative authority of each township whose territory is proposed to be included in a county 911 system act by resolution to approve or disapprove the plan within 60 days of receipt of the final plan, etc. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. And it's 13, is that right? Number four. 2024 13. Thank you. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Do you have any comments on this? Um, I've only seen in the initial draft, I haven't seen the final part, but the draft that I saw, it, it all made perfect sense to me. I got a question. Do you, uh -huh. Beaver Creek Dispatch, do I, my understanding is limited, of course, but I'm sorry. But uh, Beaver Creek, I understand their dispatch is not the same as the entire 911 system for the county. That is, Beaver Creek has their own dispatch. Yep. You have a different dispatch. Is that somehow become one here, or are those separations remain? That is a different topic. Um, however, the commissioners have hired a consultant 
who has a two-year period of time to study a complete county consolidation of dispatch centers. Um, it is my understanding at this point that uh, Beaver Creek is partially on the fence as to whether they would go with the county, but um, so I, I, that's all I know about that. Yellow Springs Police will not go in with that consolidation, but it looks like other, other remaining agencies would, which covers Green County Central Communications as it exists now. I might have misunderstood, but it's, I'm sorry. It, it, so it sounds to me like you're saying that the Yellow Springs Police does not participate in the county 911. No, they do, but they're going to maintain their own dispatch center. Those are two different things. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. I, I'm, I'm obviously confusing things that you know better about. Yeah, the, the, the Yellow Springs community has made very clear that they want Yellow Springs police to dispatch themselves. So when 911 is called, as it currently is, um, it's those calls go to Green County Central Communications. If it's for the fire department, then that active call stays within my center. If it's a Yellow Springs Police Department issue, then that call is transferred to our police department dispatchers here in town. Okay, but that makes me think that the 911 goes to one place, no matter who makes the call, mm -hmm. but when it gets to that place, it's a decision by the dispatch people. Oh, yes. wait a minute, that's for police for Yellow Springs, so mm -hmm. you send it to you. Mm -hmm. And if it's for something else, police for some other, for some other thing, then it, it's still dispatched from them. Yeah. Okay. And for the Beaver Creek Fire Department, it's kind of like that too. It goes there, but it ends up yeah. going back to dispatch for Beaver Creek. Also the city of Faribault. Can I ask a question? I think it's along the same lines, but depending upon your, whether the person making the call in is in 45387 incorporated versus unincorporated, that makes a difference in the dispatch? No, no, it does not. Yeah, that doesn't change anything. There are things about this that get muddied. What we're really speaking about is traditional landlines. We're not talking about voice over IP phone, and we're not talking about cell phone, because those are handled differently. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, so but that, that is part of, actually this, this new 911 system that we would be going to has a lot of technological beef to it that actually helps to address those, those kind little, of items. All those little peculiarities get a, yeah. programmed in. Yeah, the, the VoIP stuff is a little more complicated because it's on the resident to correct their address on their VoIP device. And, you know, that's made very clear. Like, if you buy a VoIP box, it makes very clear, like, a sticker right on the thing that says, you must, and you're responsible if you don't put in the proper address. So let's say you moved, and you forgot to update your VoIP address, well, call, when you call 911, you're potentially going to get, they're going to get sent to the wrong address, so it's... And you're talking about the landline again? No, that's just VoIP, so let's say... You would be calling from your cell phone. Right? VoIP's over internet VoIP, yeah. provider. The, the computer telephone as opposed to the cell and mm -hmm. yep. the landline. Land, or cell, I'm sorry, cells are always coordinated with GPS. Okay, so we right. get a lot land coordination in yeah. that, and that's how right. that's all figured out. Yeah. Well, this gives us a sense of the complexity of. Yeah, and I have, I'm sorry, sorry, different and I obviously don't understand all that. It's very complicated. Yeah. <coughs> so it's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? So this is. Resolution 2024-13 uh, about the 911 <coughs> system. Could we call the roll? Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. The resolution was adopted. We have another uh, resolution. Adoption of Green County Hazard Mitigation Plan. Resolution 2024-14. Whereas the safety of the Miami Township community is of paramount, of paramount importance and whereas planning for natural, technological, and man-made disasters 
is a critical factor in proactive life safety and emergency preparedness programs. And whereas Miami Township Fire Rescue is the lead local agency for emergency planning and incident management, except for law enforcement incidents, and whereas the adoption of the current Green County Hazard Mitigation Plan is an important component of emergency preparedness and a required action for the receipt of certain federal and state emergency funds, and whereas the Green County Emergency Management Agency has developed the Hazard Mitigation Plan in partnership with agencies throughout the county. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees shall adopt the current Green County Hazard Mitigation Plan. I move that we adopt the Hazard Moved by Mitigation Plan. Marilyn Moyer. Second. Seconded by Chris Meacher. Any Questions, discussion? Yeah. Did you actually get a copy of the plan to read and understand what they're saying? Because, I mean, obviously that's all wonderful talk, but if you never got to see the plan, it's hard for you to know. Well, they said, well, we'll, we'll always dump the coal in this spot. I don't know. I mean, I'm making up a Gene Hall has, say, has seen the plan, and he's approved it, and he's passed it to us for adoption. I have not read the detail. It's also sitting on your bookshelf. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have your own copy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I've got our own copy on the fire station side too. Same with the 911 plan, though. I looked at it and I had nothing to offer <laughs> the other people who put that together because it was. No, but sometimes it obligates you to act in a certain way, even though you were not the one who agreed to act in such a way, or were told what act you were to perform. That's why I just wanted to know if you had an opportunity to have Many things I defer to our chief. Sure. But. Yeah, it's not anything terribly earth shattering in terms of putting any locality in that kind of a position. The gist of it is it, it basically empowers us to be able to operate on the same page, uh, work with each other and providing mutual aid with each other and, and that kind of thing. So that's where the obligation is. but. Quite frankly, that is something that we would, we already do. It's just a matter of the 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 feds want to see that in writing, because that's not necessarily the case potentially in other communities. And they're like, well, if you want us to provide money, you know, i.e., FEMA money and and grant dollars, mm -hmm. that's what you have to do. And if you don't do it, then you don't get the money. So you're you're kind of stuck either way, because the residents certainly wouldn't be very happy if we were not eligible for FEMA money. And also, if you, there was no organization or plan to help the residents with a hazmat situation, I mean, I'm understanding some of it, but I just wanted to say, well, okay, did they let yeah. you either input or at least read the plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it doesn't change much year to year. It's mostly just minor little updates that might occur. It's been a very similar document probably for the last 10 years anyway. So. Call the roll. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Ms. Meacher? Yes. Ms. Allister? Yes. Resolution is adopted. And on solar eclipse day, you will be at the DOC, the emergency center, yeah. in effect, following some of this. Okay. All right. <coughs> Cemetery Road Report. I'll make it as brief as possible. Uh, in the last period, I've scheduled four burials, one Oak Grove, one Prairie, burial and two in Clifton, and have sold two uh, new graves in Clifton. Uh, for roads, uh, pretty much normal things. Uh, Brandon is beginning to fill more potholes, uh, and he's making an inventory of uh, bullet hole ridden, ridden signs around the township to uh, order the replacements. That's about it. Have, have we ever gotten grant for 
that is <clears throat> the county engineer last week talked about uh, the availability of money for signs not to get into safety the, signs so the minutiae of it but we don't qualify okay we've, we've explored that in the past uh, it's either size of the township or financial capabilities or or something but we don't we don't fall into mm -hmm. the qualifications well questions no the big one <laughs> the last one Fiscal. <laughs> <laughs> the meeting won't be over. Oh, right, this right. is right. the last fiscal officer report. Yes, that's right. This is the final report uh, for Margaret Sullivan's 24 years. 24 years. Yep. By the end of the month, it'll be 24 years, but I'm not going anywhere really far. Cause... We just refer to it as a rain. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like a $1.3 million report? No, it's just a little. I don't, I don't have the figures in front of me, but um, yeah, just paying bills. Anyway, we open your report and the key thing will be permanent appropriations for the rest of the year. Yes, there's a resolution for you all to approve permanent appropriations for the year. <coughs> Do you have anything else before I read this? Margaret generally reads her resolutions. I have time. Do you have any <laughs> One more time. One last time. Oh. No, the number of the Boy, you are harassing her. It's 24 <laughs> You're not harassing her. I'm not harassable. Um, it's resolution 2043 2043. You're staying up for a while. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't, okay, yeah. It's been a long day. Be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of Miami Township, Green County, Ohio, that to provide for the current expenses and other expenditures of said Board of Trustees during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2024. The following sum B and the same are hereby set aside permanently and appropriate for these several purposes for which expenditures are to be made for and during said fiscal year. Now, therefore, the Miami Township Trustees approve these permanent appropriations direct the fiscal officer to submit these sums to the county auditor. So moved. Second. Okay, we're going to read all these lines? Sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> we can make them available to the public if they so choose. That's what everything is here. And I'd like to personally commend Trustee Moyer for her very first total review and um, revision of temporary appropriations into permanent appropriations for 2024. Thank you very much. Yes, sure. It's a lot of work. And we did have uh, a meeting last week reviewing this, uh, but there was no action taken. We had how many firefighters? Six? Mm, I don't remember. Four? Anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure they participated in it other than listening closely. Mm -hmm. Any comments? Mm -hmm. Discussion? I have none. Um, no, I don't. Well, it's uh, remarkably similar to last year. Mm. I would well, say how, would you, how would you make a difference then? How would you describe it? No comment. Well, the newspapers kind of want to say something. It, they can see the document if they request it. Okay. Is there a sum total? So? Oh, although it's, it's all months. one basket, there are very separate, like roads don't get mixed with fire and rescue, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. there is, so. Yeah. But it's uh, overwhelmingly you know, a fire you know, rescue. The big, the big number, Chris, somewhere around. It's on your last page. Last page. But, um, we have a which, number. Which I can't read, but it's the one that says final appropriation two 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 four one four zero four five five. If I read that right. Could you repeat that one? Can anybody read that better than I? Last, last line of the last page. Final preparation. It's not two. my last page. 
<laughs> Who collated these then? <laughs> you have three different documents. One this is eight of eight. Last page. This is nine of nine. Nine of nine. Oh, well, I couldn't read the nine nine. Okay. Final appropriation two million. Two, two, four, seven. Help me out, guys. One, oh, three. Sam's glasses. <laughs> two million, two hundred forty-seven thousand, four hundred four dollars and eighty-three cents. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And then the trustee's uh, stipend went down because our total budget Instead of fiscal officers, mm -hmm. uh, which is interesting. This includes expenditures for the firehouse. So, and uh, the ongoing expenditure has gone down a little bit for the firehouse. Now I'm I've lost. Move Was there a move? Who yes. moved? Marilyn. Yeah. Take a second. Um, Call the roll. No, the other way around. Oh, the other way around. Mr. Mutter. Uh, it's been moved. Okay, let's do this. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2024-15 permanent appropriations. Um, Mr. Mutter. Yes. Ms. Moy. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. The resolution is adopted. Um, I'd like to just wrap up my portion of the meeting here and. Um, expressed to everybody that uh, it's been an, an honor and a privilege to serve in this position. Um, it's, uh, I feel that um, all the trustees that have come and go, Chris has been with me all along. <laughs> and um, um, I can um, assure the township that the trustees, all the trustees that we've had are very committed, smart people, and fairly reasonable, I'd say. <laughs> And um, you know it's not a combative situation, and uh, they show respect for each other. And um, I have a big heart for the fire department. Um, to just really, it's been a privilege to know them and to see um, who they are behind the scenes. And, and they're good people, and we're very, again, we're very fortunate to have these folks. They're they're worth every penny, honestly. And then some. Thank you. <clears throat> And well, since I was called out, jeez. <laughs> what? I remember a long time ago. What are you going to do? The first day Margaret came, <laughs> I cannot <laughs> tell you, folks, how excited we were to have her on board with us. It was a day that would live in him for me. Why? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go into where you going. I want to do a lot of detail about what preceded. Anyway, um, and looking around, give or take, Mr. Mr. Part time in 2000 or 1997 or whatever it was. Um, I don't see too many faces that were here when I when Margaret and I first started. So I'm taking it upon myself to heartily thank her for every day of your service. Uh, and we will miss you a lot. And we know that you're going to be around somewhat, at least until somebody says adios. But I would like to give you a hearty handshake. <laughs> thank you. We're yeah, yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we'll be around I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. No. That's and will you invite the public to your um, party, Chris? Uh, yes, we had a party. No, we have a party. party. Well, well we probably won't get in the public. Oh. You think? I miss it. It's in the newspaper, inviting people? Well, that's true, but the viewers oh, may okay. not view this oh, yeah, I got by Wednesday. If they do, please oh, join us. Five o'clock on Wednesday, on Wednesday in this room. Yep. Cookies and punch. <laughs> celebrate Margaret's transition. It, it's actually cookies and water because we're not supposed to have food or drink in this room. <laughs> oh, okay. And I kind of decided punch might get spilled yeah, it would make a mess. and it might make a stain. So we're, yeah. we're going with water. Yeah, we'll but we'll have Again, cookies. I can't say enough of for 
the people who serve the township. No. And um, it's been a lot of Back to you, Mr. Chair. So is this the end of the Yes, I'm, I of finished for today. Been, yeah. well, I lost my agenda. Standing committee reports in the RPC. Transportation, 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 grants. That's all they, they talked about. Green County Regional Planning. I was unfortunately out of town at the last meeting, so I missed the meeting. Well, the Clifton Union Cemetery, I'm finally earning my salary, which is zero. <laughs> uh, thank you for overseeing burials in the absence of our uh, sexton in Bilken Hour. Uh, but we received, I made reference to this uh, earlier, we were willed a house that is, as it's not been listed, but it's well, within a week it will be listed. Uh, we're having it emptied and the, uh, and the garage torn down and it will be for sale and that will, the money from that uh, has been designated as an endowment. The income from the endowment will help pay for maintenance of the uh, of the cemetery and it has put the cemetery board in a very different position of you know we're we're interacting uh, on a project and it's very tangible uh, rather than uh, the sort of routine that we've gone through meeting two or three times a year uh, just kind of saying great okay and checking something off so i've gotten to know uh, tom waddle of green township and in clark county uh, who's our board chair and our other board member linda parsons from clifton uh, and reminded of the unique nature of so-called Union Cemetery, where you cross jurisdictions. Some, more often it's between a city and a township, but in our case, two different townships and two different counties. So we've had two different prosecutors' opinions, two different, uh, on and on. Uh, normally, it's not, not a big deal, but because we have this house that's maybe $100,000, uh, property. How long ago do you recall it was willed the cemetery? No, oh, it was 15 years? No. Oh, 11 years? I don't know. I don't know when she actually started. Like 15 or 20. Uh, but, yeah, family, family, family members got to use it until they passed away. Passed. Mm -hmm. Where's the house located? It's on Route 72 south of Springfield. And just as a matter of information, a, a union cemetery is totally autonomous from the political jurisdictions that own it. It's very much like a planning commission or a, or a BZA. They have their own board, they have their own bylaws, they make their own rules and regulations. We have, we have nothing to do with the management of the cemetery, and neither does the other township, Green Township and Clark County. That is solely the responsibility of the board. Except that we and they have their own build, too. We build the townships. Well, but, yeah, but that's mm -hmm. just as a result of a contract for service. It really has little to do with. I mean, it has nothing to do with us. I mean, if you decide to to take it independently, then we're just playing out. Yep, totally. And the house is it in Green County? Clark. It's in Clark. Oh. That's it. Anyway, thanks for listening to my story. Yellow Springs Development Corporation.
Yeah, I went to the meeting. It was interesting. They continue to work on reaching out to uh, potential businesses and that may spin off and locate here due to the uh, larger businesses having east of here, such as the Honda plant and things. Courting, courting development. Environmental Commission? I have no report. Uh, I went to the Green County Township Association meeting last week. Uh, it was the uh, annual report of the county engineer and she sent, she emailed a PowerPoint presentation basically just reporting on the projects that are underway this year uh, that is different road roundabouts and uh, reconstruction uh, and later this week I will go to an early morning presentation on township um, drainage uh, responsibilities, uh, water resources, stormwater, storm uh, which is nothing dramatic has changed legally, it's just that with the change in our rain patterns, having more uh, intense rains, uh, some townships are having a lot of problems. Uh, anyway, I'll learn what we're expected to be doing. Um, shall I go on? G GFNB, what's that stand That's, um, Forest Natural Burial. Natural, natural Burial. Okay. We're the Prairie people. Um, we have our quarterly meeting April 29th. It should have been earlier, but there's an eclipse and a Passover, first day of Passover, we passed over. And um, so April 29th. Um, that's all. Are there any committees that we didn't put on this list? I think so. We put it most of them. Okay. We have Otarma visit, meeting room scheduling, and zoning inspector uh, job description and advertising plan. Well, Otarma just wanted to check in with all our, mostly our IT things. Um, they, they are our risk insurance company. I, I, there's not much to say except for the, he uh, is sending over, he really wants us to get a, a credit card policy and is sending over, a, um, he's surprised we haven't been dinged on it, and sending over a uh, template. And then he'd also like us to make a, what do you call it, Denny? Like, it's like a contingency plan where yeah. if something happened, where are we going to set up operation and how are we going to do it? Yeah. Yeah, we're a boilerplate of that. Kind of like too. a disaster recovery. Kind yeah, like where would we set up operations if it's going to be you mean off site? Off site. And um, he had some concern about um, where we're keeping our documents. Um, I assured him I keep some on my laptop, and, but everything, I, if I write like a draft of a resolution, it goes straight into the email system. But he, he kind of suggested that we start using our, our Outlook filing system jointly. Is that what you heard? Yeah. And um, I'm open to that. I told them that we may have some challenges between the three styles or the three com comfort levels, but and did you get this sense he was, it was a kind suggestion more than a, yeah. than yeah. a get her in line? Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to start keeping stuff there that, so you guys can get to it too. But that's all. Yeah, it was it was actually a, I mean, it was a good visit, um, yeah. you know, lots of lots of helpful stuff, particularly in terms of coming back with some templates and that. So I mean, I don't I don't think either one of us have a tremendous amount of work to do post visit. Mm -hmm. So was this an on-site visit or Zoom? Yeah. On-site. 
and he looked around and our, our stuff and our equipment and things. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I brought up the meeting room scheduling is because, well, I, I first want to say there's a number of community groups that are really, they really, people really like this room. And I think they're taking good care of it. And there's some regulars. But there were two occasions where I noticed there was, um, the firefighters came in to train and there was a mix up. And they were so nice, they said we could find another spot. Yeah. And that, that kind of like that. That really shouldn't be happening. And I didn't, and I noticed some groups, some groups will write their name on there. And I don't know if that's part of our procedure. And then other groups, like the YSDC gathers, and they don't even write their name because everybody knows they're the first. Yeah, they, they make an assumption that they're the first Wednesday and. They de ab absolutely there. definitely need to be on the calendar because I know that I know there ended up being a conflict um, with that, unfortunately, and it was a circumstance where they weren't on the calendar. In terms of my staff, um, you know, it's easy enough if they if they didn't because they'll decide when they're going to do training just based on how the day has shook out in terms of checks done or call volume or whatever. Um, but they still have, you know, it's the, the, the shift officer's responsibility to come check this calendar. Because yeah. that was the idea of we just keep it a calendar, it's centrally located, so there's no area of confusion. Yeah. Um, so I, I know one of my company officers is very good about that. Yeah. Um, because he puts it in his little report that he gives to the shift guy saying this is what we've got to do. So for us it's really not a big deal, but it is potentially concerning if somebody just goes, oh, I'm just going to yeah. pick up and sign off on it. Yeah. They shouldn't I'll, I'll talk it. to that group that's been with their name on it. And Don, you're, you're mostly in contact with, there's, I think the, the tree committee, um, the YSDC, the, um, men's group. the men's group. Mm -hmm. yes. The key group. I'm sorry. Um, Solar for a Green Future has been meeting here and the National Burial Quarterly. But okay. maybe we should have a little card up there next that is enter your time, email the well, D. Powell mm -hmm. um, before each meeting. Just confirming. I mean, the, uh, I think that that should be the pattern. I'm, I'm not quite. I'm not quite following what your goal would be for that. Uh, I, well, do you trust just having uh, scheduling time on the calendar? If people write it on there, I would think you could. Yeah, yeah. If people write it on there, and and we're not. I, I mean, I. I have turned one group down who had absolutely no affiliation with the village or the township and was also a for-profit. And I'm like, no, you, you can't use your space. Mm -hmm. um, but I've only had that one time. Um, outside of that, the groups that meet here consistently have done so now since we opened it up. Um, a new one potentially could be the Chamber of Commerce. Um, there's. I went to one of their meetings and we were all sitting right up on each other and I said, why don't you just come meet in the fire station? And they met here last week? Yeah. Or a yeah, exactly. very recently. Yeah. And, uh, you yeah, know, so we, I'm not sure how often they meet, but I could see them potentially coming in as well. But I really am okay as long as, as long as it's, you know, it's written up there. I, it doesn't matter well, to me. I mean, there are two other things that I think could easily be issues, problems. Uh, parking. Yes. When construction next door gets going, we will lose overflow parking. Yeah. Now, there is usually space at the Friends Care Center, but we don't have any arrangement with that. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, and then the other is opening the door I've sort of considered myself on call with some of the groups mm -hmm. uh, to come open up because if there's you know, an ambulance run mm -hmm. uh, or a fire run, there'd be no one here to let them in. Yep. So 
and we don't have a good solution to that outside of, you know, if it's a med call, then in theory, if I'm not out of town in a meeting or something like that, then I'm here, you know, and I obviously would let them in. But there definitely is a possibility where there could be no one here. Um, I can only think of one time that that was an issue, but I, I'm just saying I think that's the case. I'm, I'm not, you know, how memory is. Now, it may even have been a year ago, we talked about the regular groups, uh, like the Development Corporation, could have uh, a key card. Yeah, that could totally be done. They could have a key card that just allowed them to open the front door and you just somewhat switch the flip on that, uh, you know, on it. I, that doesn't, certainly doesn't cause me any grief. And a, another thing would be, I mean, one system would be uh, that we would have a key card that people would just come in and pick up and then leave behind. Hmm. That would require somebody coming in the day ahead or mm -hmm. uh, one of us delivering the key card. Yeah, I, I mean, for convenience, the, the first suggestion was would, would be the easier one. I mean, it's not a big deal if, uh, if a card gets lost or something like that. I just simply disable it. Um, and it only allows them into this bare public space. I, I can set what door they actually can get in, so they period. So I would just set it so they could only get in the front door. Then obviously this room is not necessarily locked and they have access to the bathrooms and everything. But you still couldn't issue a card like that onto a, a, a random meeting. No. Uh, so the idea of potentially having a card at, at your public desk, mm -hmm. um, if people were here, yeah. you know, to come the day before, yep. pick it up, and then drop That's it That's a good point. So we could, we could definitely go both routes. Mm -hmm. I would, I guess that would be my thought. They tend to be pretty regular, regulars. Yes. The ones that are coming are. Yes. Send me. I'm not aware of there having been a problem with food yet, but at one point we talked about uh, if you were having, oh, the, the key association, for instance, would have food in the hallway. And we talked about requiring a deposit in case cleanup needed to be done. Has there ever really been a problem? No. That sounds like more work than sweeping the floor. <laughs> okay. And we gave the extra food to the, the uh, crew, sir. Yeah. yeah, no, I haven't had any problems with, with anything like mm -hmm. that at all. So, What's the next step on a key card? Um, so I would need to have basically a list of the groups, a contact person, so that card could be made. Um, that's That would really be it. I mean, it takes no effort to make cards. Well, I'll contact each of the groups that seem to be regulars and see what happens. Okay. Um, let me write that down before we go to the next. Denise Swinger has uh, shared with us a proposed zoning inspector job description. Are you folks? Yeah, ready. I read it. I think it's excellent. I agree with every point that she's made, and in fact, to the point where it's written as a uh, advertisement for uh, for uh, applicants, any interested applicants. And after our discussion, if we get to that point, I would be happy to arrange to have the Yellow Springs News print it at their most earliest convenience because time is marching on. It will be April, basically, before it even gets in the paper, and then we're going to want to keep it there for a couple of weeks, probably, and then start doing interviews. 
and we promised Denise that you know pretty much April would be you know the last time she would be working. So mm -hmm. it, it's got to get started. Here. Yeah. So oh. if, if you guys have a lot of revisions, you know either make them now or make them soon because I'd like to get this published. I I have some specific. Uh, Changes I would suggest, but well, I'm noticing that it's probably well needed, but it's it's it seems like an expansion of what, what, what we've had in the past. And are we prepared to? It sounds like everything. It's everything that we need. It, it, it's everything that we should have done, either have done or should have done, mm -hmm. and so I, I'm not in favor of of xing out anything. Okay. Can you well, summarize it just a little bit, or is it way too much? Well, it's sort of long, <laughs> uh, but <clears throat> zoning permits, people asking, yeah. uh, and for the county building, uh, to get a building permit, you need to have a zoning permit. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, and, and typically the person will come yeah. into the office. I, I think a lot of this, there's requirements, but there's... So it, it's conduct thorough inspections of properties, review zoning permit applications and site plans, collaborate with property owners to address increasing concerns. Is this okay then? Do sure, go ahead. Um, Investigate and respond to zoning violation complaints. Maintain accurate records of zoning permits and et cetera. Um, prepare um, reports, um, detailed reports and agendas for the Zoning Commission and the Board of the Zoning Appeals meetings. Stay informed about the changes in zoning laws. Provide guidance to the public regarding, regarding zoning requirements and process. Um, propose amendments to z the zoning resolution, resolution to the Zoning Commission. So work closely with the Zoning Commission, kind of um, maybe make, like it says, propose amendments. Um, work with various local agencies, such as Green Regional Planning, Health Department, Soil and Water, um, Green County Soil and Water. Provide the Township Trustees with a monthly activity report and records retention. So, and it also says, it requirements, bachelor's degree. No, that's not good. Plan. Okay. You asked <laughs> what's it? Well, I'm curious about the, choir, uh, the qualifications, minimum qual qualifications, preferred well, qualifications. Well, we can uh, talk about that because I have some criticisms. Yeah, and then okay. how many hours is it period or is that, it hourly? That's is it, what's not clear. It might be a, it's really clear. Would you say 20 hours a week, four okay. hours in office? Okay. I, I uh, actually, she does not. She does not detail that, and I question the need for that. Is I, I don't know why we would have regular hours. That is, <clears throat> you come into the office when someone wants to get a permit. You meet them at the office. Um, do we want to pay someone to for office time that? Doesn't get used. Yeah. Well, then, I, I, then you say that ends that experiment. You don't know. I mean, you don't know until you know whether anybody would come in and want to talk about something that they want to do, uh, but not well, officially. That is, I would. <clears throat> I would leave that to the judgment of whoever we hire. What we might say, we would like you to try and see if it's worth having office hours. Uh, I, I, I think what she was looking at is several instances we found where this building isn't accessible. To, and we wouldn't want to put that burden on them, but if there were things they had to do with records and stuff, they could be here at that time and the public could at least know two days a week or something that you can re reach somebody at this building. At this point, nobody can reliably find an office person. Here. Right. Well, you call and make an appointment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm not, I'm just saying I don't that was still, think it that needs was the idea. to be. Okay. That was the idea. I don't think it needs to be required. Okay. It's a, a suggestion for what might be better, and let's see what happens. That sounds good. 
Um, mm -hmm. And your other? But uh, I would have thought that would be under responsibility rather than requirement. Or, that is, she's. My other things, I don't think. Uh, requirements, bachelor's degree in urban planning, public administration, or, or uh, I, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't require a degree. Okay, cross it out. <laughs> and I think that, um, I, I talked to her about that, and she, she, and I think she changed it to, or five plus years of proven experience, the, the bachelor's degree in, in one of those fields, or years of proven experience in the design and fishing. So you, I don't know if Richard's off had a um, degree in any of those areas, but, well, he, he, had, but, but he had been doing it for the village. But he had, mm -hmm. you know, years of experience, and obviously what he was doing. So that's why she would well, either, the other, either or, either you're fresh out of college and you mm -hmm. know a lot, or you've gone through the school of hard knocks and you know a lot. Well, the next one is strong knowledge of local and state zoning laws and regulations, and to me that, that's on the job. Well, I, I would say that you know you need to have this strong knowledge, and how do you get it? Perhaps experience, perhaps uh, really. training, formal education. How uh, do you measure whether or not someone has it? Pardon? How are you going to measure whether or not somebody has it? Strong. We will Res grill them extensively. Interview them and <laughs> talk to them. them. Strong and personality is what they'll know. Maybe they could answer marketing experience skills. they have. They could, they could answer training they have. Um, but if, if there are no minimum requirements to indicate that they uh, Anyway, it's okay. I'll well, let it go. <laughs> you come from a world where. Mm -hmm. There lots are. Lots of there, a, it's built upon having. Then it's built upon having a degree because I'm mm -hmm. also more sure about I mean, you know, if it's, uh, right. I've got a whole lifetime before anything dealt with college education. But mm -hmm. I just think um, that sometimes you need to have language I know that's measurable. And I think well, strong isn't measurable. I have no. Uh, because you're gonna I have no objection to, you know, if we put in any one of these and, and just say, or equivalent. But something, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make a, a suggestion from the peanut gallery here that you have some kind of language that is measurable when we're talking about a new level of accountability on all of this stuff because a lot of accountability is a huge issue now for many, many positions and it seems like things are going toward requiring more accountability for everything. And so I think that I would use language that is at least measurable because if you have more than one candidate applying and you choose one over another, are you going to be defensible in why one candidate, when there's a salary of some sort of assuming at stake? Oh, somebody saying, well, why didn't I get the job? You're prejudiced or something like that? I don't know what they'd say, but you know, you need to be able to clearly delineate why one candidate is selected if more than one applies, or why nobody's selected if you don't think there's anybody qualified, and how not to repeat mm -hmm. any. I, I, uh, I don't want to turn this into a, a philosophical discussion about hiring, but I, I, I resist the term measurable. It's accountable. Uh, accountable. Yeah, but so how can you be accountable? I, I'll go with the word accountable, and um, so I need to hear the metric that would make you accountable for your decision on the hire, and that's back to measurement, but I'm done. The I, word metric also is know, yeah. when you... <sighs> but you can't select, you You might yeah. want to guard against Let selecting hold. somebody for reasons that aren't... I don't know that we that we're agreeing on my objection, but that I have a couple other things. Um, and some of this, uh, it's kind of moot, but detail-oriented with strong analytical and problem-solving skills. Uh, what in this job? involves 
analytic and problem solving. It's more. Uh, well, I, I've said by <laughs> Denise the last couple months and watched your problem solving mm -hmm. and analyze situations. So um, people come with, see with all kinds of situations. And you research and you see what what the code says, and then you see what their practical situation is. And think of agritourism. And think of temporary use, think of agritourism. Mm -hmm. Think, think, of, think of somebody who wants to do something but has this really strange lot that yeah. can't it can't work, and you have to make a decision on whether you can justify giving them a there recommending a variance or recommending a permit. Okay. Well, my, my two main objections are the requirement that we maintain regular hours for a zoning office. Uh, I see that as a, uh, something to try out, but not as a requirement in the job description. And the other is, I'd, I'd be comfortable saying, uh, uh, Five plus years of experience in zoning administration, or uh, parallel, uh, or, or equivalent, or parallel work. I'm not sure what that would be, but there, somebody might turn up. With in my opinion, that requirement might reduce your applicant pool down to half a half an applicant. I mean, there's just not that many people out there with that kind of specific background to qualify them. What's your suggestion? Well, to say strong, strong knowledge of local and state uh, zoning laws and regulations uh, and, and, and the various other things listed, uh, I think is enough. I'd skip the, the degree and the specific number of years of zoning administration experience. Fine with me. I'm not in favor of that. You're not in favor of dropping that? The, the degree or the specific number of years of experience. What did you think that should be kept in? Yeah. I mean, what? would, would we eliminate somebody for not having a bachelor's degree? Is there, are there associate's degrees and things which are... These, these types of things, like bachelor's degrees. Mm -hmm. It's not saying you have to have a bachelor's degree. If you've got a degree, you then have an opportunity to get a job with regional planning at uh, $60,000 a year. But they're not going to come in here for yeah. $25 can, an hour. Can they walk into a regional planning? Sure. Okay. Not, maybe not ours, but other offices around, at least around Green County, and according to Deandra, everywhere, everywhere that she interfaces with, they're just begging for people. I mean, it's like trying to find paramedics. So, so you're, you're you're saying that doesn't matter if we have it because we're we'll probably not going to get the people with special degrees. Mm -hmm. yeah. I I agree with Don on getting rid. I agree with you on getting rid of those two requirements because I'm not sure they describe the person that you are looking for, but what, what verbiage could you use? Because I think that the high analytical skills and everything, and you know, maybe I shouldn't be weighing in this heavily on this, but I'll go right ahead. this is kind of, this is the kind of stuff that I've had to do so much of is to try to figure out how do you put forth a position description and you've got to know that well, yeah. Denise has an awfully good idea. There, there are people who have, uh, I mean, we found Denise, we've had inquiries from people who have worked in local zoning uh, and whether it's city, other townships, um, I don't I have no idea whether they have a specific uh, degree or the number of years I, I agree. Uh, of experience, but can they do the job and then we list strong knowledge of local and state zoning, right. excellent communication, uh, ability to interpret complex legal and technical documents, and on. 
And I think then if you leave the analytical part in, I think that the, it just sounds to me like the line items that Denise has included describe that person better than the degree or the years of experience because they most likely haven't unless it's, you know, they probably haven't served in that capacity. And if they're over, over qualified, they're not, you know, going to apply for this position. So that's, I think, yeah, I, every time that I've dealt with Zop on zoning issues, it's been highly analytical and problem solving because every single thing presents a brand new situation based upon what Marilyn is saying because oh you've got this weird this or this weird that it's nothing just fits in the box and so I think that it really has required someone who has knowledge of everything but then also a lot of problem solving and all of that. Maybe you should fly. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, you're interviewing for this job as well. No, I'm not. No, I, I, I know. Know. I'm so retired. So I, would, I would like to delete what I've already identified, the, the degree or five-year experience. Okay. And uh, the regular hours. But how many hours a week is the position? It, that wherever you are, because, you know, Richard worked an awful lot from home, let's face it. And so, and how many hours of work are you expecting a week? A lot of it's out in the field, you know? And it's so if you set up the appointment, anytime. yeah, right. But how many hours a week are you anticipating this position? Well, the point. last three months worth of experience on the temporary basis. Yeah she has determined this number of 20. Yeah, I have to, have to say that every time I bothered Richard with something, it took a minute. There was a high time requirement and calling out to look at different events that were happening and follow up and looking at things for my property. Sometimes he'd have to be out there four, five, six visits for one question um, and nothing social about the visits. He kept his nose very much the guy's going on on work so yeah but the description talks about 20 hours a week yeah i think that's great uh, Just not i actually didn't see that in here she must have talked to us yeah see i didn't hear she, that she that brought that those numbers up in our previous meeting yeah. um, so if you take out the office requirements i think there needs to be some kind of commitment to how many hours a week you are anticipating it Require. Say 15 to 20 hours a week. Oh, uh, should we say estimated 15 to 20 hours a week? Yeah, average 15 to 20 because there might be a 40 hour week mm -hmm. and then 10 hours. February in a really busy spring or something. Yeah, right. Well, this, although this February is really busy for, for the zoning inspector. Or if Chanel wants to do more. Sure. <laughs> Shower one of his friends lives him across the street from my house. <laughs> yeah. so I have a funny way of agreeing with you, don't I, Don? Um, <laughs> it's yeah, like a James, that I, I so did that agree. James was, was close to Kyle. Was it, no, I'm the one right across the, the street. Yellowstone. Well, we've had Shop we had a great big days. white tent up the road from me doing countless weddings with bands and I mean. You know, and it's all when I wanted to do events at my house, but never could because I always asked first. You know, it's my big mistake, I guess. So was that on your your township side of your property or your village side of your property? A township, and it's on my property that's further away. It's not on the glass farm. Yeah. So. So you were following the rules, and so you didn't get to do your thing. Correct. You know, it's like. Well, let's. Come back to the focus on this. That uh, I'm comfortable with removing the uh, specific degree or number of years experience, and 
substituting, instead of saying maintain regular hours for the zoning office, saying estimated five to 20, 15 to 20 hours per week. On average. I would put average in there because if someone might have to have a longer week and that might be counterbalanced for the, well, not so. Do, do you guys put anything in there about um, any kind of a, is there a physical requirement? Because I'm not hearing anything about a physical requirement. Well, well we can evaluate that on someone. Um, you have obviously experience it in this hire, this hiring. Yeah, right. Yeah, so writing what, position what, descriptions. But even we have what is it? Some kind of like, can you lift fifty pounds, or do you need um, services, or what? What are you suggesting? So, what is required? I know if it's uh, out in the township, if it's rural, there's not. It's not always ADA compliant. So you need to be able to drive and you need to be able to walk on uneven ground? Well, you, yeah. Um, ambulate on, uh, or yeah, ambulate on uneven terrain or something like that just to go out and look at things. But I'm, I'm just, it was a question. Yeah. Had Does those, it mean, do you? Well, there, yeah, there is field work. Yeah, is that on there? No. Yeah, I think that something just they mentioning. Field work. What would be a a good phrase for that. We're probably going to want to let's see. Um, Able to do field work on undeveloped uh, land? I don't know, I'm not destroying it. I, I, I like that phrasing. Ability to do Ability field work. Ability to ambulate, on, really. It's you know, field work on inspections on undeveloped land. Undeveloped to farmland to carry a yeah or farmland because a, it's developed at a certain way. Yeah. It's a two yeah. by four on a ten speed bicycle. <laughs> Barefoot. Barefoot. It worked. That's how I that's, I that's, that's how you showed up. That's I am all great. Fun, you know? We are still on camera. Ability to no, I, I was saying that fondly. I know. That's what I like. That's one of the things I like about Richard is watching him. He was go very, by on his bike yeah. with any number of yeah, he knew his stuff. He really was a big ladder or a big, uh, a big ability to do field work and inspection on undeveloped land. Maybe traverse. I don't know if they're going to do field work, but ability somehow yeah do field work. I don't know exactly what that means. Well, field work is so broad and open. There you go. Okay, I'm not seeing. I went on the other side uh, of that stick, you know, you have to avoid broad and open and be specific so that you can so you be defensible. Yeah, yeah. I, I would like a motion to en endorse this job description. I would, and do we want to limit it to the Yellow Springs News? Wait a minute, one step at a time. Is there any requirement for them to live in 45387 or not at all? You can't do that. No. You can't do um, that. The national uh, I'll move that we accept uh, this description, village, as but you can't present it to live in the village or as amended. It's not or not legal, amended, even though it makes sense. Second, yeah. Can we call a roll, please? We moved and seconded to accept the zoning vector job description as amended after discussion. Mr. Moocher? Uh, yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion approved. So, Do we want to print the whole, mm -hmm. all the details in the so. newspaper ad? Yeah, I, okay. I think people need to know what they're... And, and why are we limiting to Yellow Springs? Mm -hmm. so something through Green Regional Planning or something? We can, they have some sort of distribution? I don't know if they still do or not. They used to have a little help wanted section. I haven't heard of it since forever, but I'm going there tomorrow. And I can ask yeah, I just I, I think of how, how many people don't read the Yellow Springs news. It will sure. be in the print. Will it be in the, the online edition? Um, is what? should be able to, should we put it online somewhere? We don't really have. I mean, definitely your web page for sure. Yeah, but that doesn't get a whole lot of traffic. But um, 
Oh, it's in the. Yeah. We could send it to the township association uh, email list. That's true. We've got 50 people right there. Okay. Um, so, we, are you going to type the changes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then I'll postpone my. Uh, I wanted to talk about advertising in the Old Springs News uh, as a sort of an annual plan, but I'll postpone that. I'm going to post, post, postpone my resolution discussion. Okay. You. You're going to postpone what? My resolution versus motion discussion. Okay. Uh, well, that, that sounds terrible. So there's nothing else on our agenda. I move to adjourn. I second. <laughs> I'm in favor. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. It was nice to meet you.